Hello. We have a new poll in Sweden from January. This was done by Centio Poll Institute. It's a pretty okay institute. There's only one institute that I know is absolutely corrupt, and that is they're called Novus. Right? Centio is pretty okay. So they did another poll and uh, the Sweden Democrats got 22.3% and the Social Democrats got 218 And then there is the Moderate Party at 184 Now I predicted that the Sweden Democrats was going to be the biggest party in the next election. Now, it already happened according to this poll. So my prediction is pretty dull. <laughs> So I have to make another one. So I predict they will get 28% in the next election. Not less. Right. You have to remember something about the Sweden Democrats. And that is when the poll institutes contact people, some will admit that they vote for the Sweden Democrats. But many are embarrassed to say so. And some won't even answer. Like myself, if a poll institute call me, I will not tell them. Okay? So, and we know this from earlier elections. So the Sweden Democrats are well ahead already. Which is good. I think so. Because I will vote for them. I want Sweden out of the EU. And I want proper solution to criminality and Islamization in Sweden. If they will be able to do it, I don't know. That's another question. At least they are talking about it. So it's fine with me. There is another political party that I actually like. I actually like the, the chairman, and that is the Christian Democrats. I'm not Christian, but I like her. Okay, they are moving up, according to this poll. They are still very low, but I'm sort of rooting for them. Now, the Social Democrats, I want to talk about them, because they have been the biggest party for 101 years in Sweden. So this ends next election. And I don't see how they can ever be governing Sweden again. Maybe in the future. But I don't think so, truthfully. Because of what they did, because of their politics. They have a core of voters and these people have been voting for the Social Democrats possibly for all of their lives. And, uh, but still, now they are really, really losing big time. So what did they do about it? <laughs> yeah, well they have According to me, two strategies. <laughs> now we're talking about the migration problem, the criminality problem in Sweden. That's really what turned this whole thing around. Because people are so, so fed up with hearing about these crimes being committed in Sweden. These women being raped and so on, these cars burning, so that's what turned it around, so how do they deal with it, the social democrats, they understand that this is important to the Swedish people, so they have two strategies, one is to deny it, there is no problem, it's an illusion, uh, it's made up, that's one strategy, they've been uh, using this strategy for a long time. <laughs> right. I'll give you an example. But first I will tell you the second strategy that they are doing, which is in conflict 
with the other one. They are, they are presenting themselves as very tough and sincere about solving crime and integration. All right. <laughs> they are Rambo warriors. Uh, so they are presenting solutions to this problem that they, in this, at the same time, deny exist. See? I'll give you an example of the first strategy. They have a minister of the interior. His name is Anders Ygeman. He's a joke. So, he was asked about these... Um, you know, these uh, music festivals where young Swedish women were harassed and molested by immigrants. They have been uh, arguing, you know, that it's not for certain that they were all immigrants, but they were. It's been proven. It's documented by the police. Anyway, so, Anders Ygeman, he says the following. Now, I'm translating from Swedish. He says, uh, sexual offense at festivals are, in my opinion, less today compared to 20 years ago. <laughs> but today we we talk about it more. <laughs> he actually said this, right? You know, I'm sure you had this experience. Sometimes you wonder what what is coming out of this guy's mouth. I mean, he must have some education, some experience. Has he's been a politician for some time, and this is what he's saying. Yeah. It's totally unreal, and. Of course, the Swedish citizens, the absolute majority, understand that he is full of shit. Okay. And I have another example, and this is from our PM, Stefan Levian. He's a star. Yeah. He was asked about the situation for women in Saudi Arabia. I talked about this before. He went down to Saudi Arabia and he was very gentle towards the Saudi Arabian princes and kings. He was making sure that they weren't upset with him, okay? And then reporters tried to push him to, uh, about this issue, about women being so oppressed in Saudi Arabia and he was asked oh, so there is no problems for women in Saudi Arabia <laughs> and then he said this of course there is as at home in Sweden there are obstacles for women hmm. <laughs> uh, uh, a lack in functioning care for elderly makes women move away from full-time into part-time and they also stop working in Sweden <laughs> you see so this exists on both sides obstacles for women participation Yeah, he's a star. So that's how they solve it, with his ass comments. Wow. So, I will not be surprised if they end up below 20%. That's my wish. They are very, very incapable of uh, running Sweden. We get more problems and more taxes <coughs> and more future debts. 
Right, so it's starting to look good. All right, 